completely new project as well. Um, so as some of you may have been aware, I went to the Overland show in Stratford upon Avon last weekend. It was the last show that they're going to be running at Stratford upon Avon. So hopefully they find a new new premises next year. So it's their big finale. And um, at the show, I met a chap called Chris, and he runs a, a YouTube channel um, called The Orange Defender. So some of you may already be aware of that one. So what he has been doing over the last few years is doing trips. Um, not organised trips in the sense that he's a tour guide, but just as an independent guy doing trips with his friends. And next year in uh, January, tail end of January, um, he is doing a trip to the Nord Cap, so the North Cape in top of Norway. Um, so that's what used to be like the top of the world before the Arctic was discovered before the North Pole. Um, and he's driving up there, it's a 5,000 mile trip in 10 days and I have agreed to go with him. So that puts a different slant on the car and what I actually have to do to, to Frank as he's kind of geared up really more for uh, family trips and more the heat rather than the cold. Um, but now I've got to have to, gonna have to rejig him ready in time for January um, to be down to minus 35. So <laughs> a few things I need to do. Um, one of which is install a heater, which is what I'm going to look at today. So the diesel heater market has just gone nuts. Um, China are now producing reliable, um, cheap. Wow. My loud little uh, neighbour. Um, reliable diesel heaters. So two, five, and eight kilowatt heaters, and I have bought. Uh, a little five kilowatt one, which I'm going to try and install in the, the wheel well, but I'll, you know, I'll give you an overview as to what I'm looking to do. So for the time being, the kitchen is out. The kitchen is currently over there, being used to shove rubbish on. Um, that will be going back in. Um, and for the time being, we've got the floor down, just because I'm using it as a kind of a normal car at the minute. But the plan will be to remove this out and make use of some of the space in here. So we have um, quite a bit of space and no spare wheel. Uh, that is because the spare wheel does not fit in here anymore because I've got running these 30, well nearly 32 inch tires. So the plan will be to reinstate the kitchen at some point over the top, um, but make use of this space in here to run a diesel heater. Now I'm gonna prop this up and grab the diesel heater and I'm gonna show you roughly where I'm gonna be looking to put it. This is the diesel heater I went for. Um, it's a Max Speeding Rods, Max Speeding Rods, <laughs> um, uh, five kilowatt diesel heater, and it came with a kit, and I'll show you the rest of the stuff a bit later on, on the floor down there. Um, but essentially, this is a reasonably reliable one. It's a CE registered one, so it's it's been registered as, as being pretty safe. Um, and when you're burning diesel in a car, kind of want it to be as safe as possible, really. It's quite a little compact unit. Um, and down at the bottom, we're gonna to need to be running um, the air intake in, exhaust out. Now the plan's gonna be, I'm gonna run, because the fridge kind of goes over this side, that's not an easy place to access. Also, I'm gonna be taking the fridge with me, which means I've got this space, this side, if you remember, um, that is currently, I was gonna put a drawer here, but it's currently empty. Now this is where I'm gonna sleep. I'm actually going to sleep in, in there and poke my feet through here. It's not a huge amount of room, but it will do the job. The seats will be going out anyway. Um, now, I don't particularly want to be sleeping on top of the diesel heater. So I'm going to put the diesel heater, I think, this side with the outlet facing that way. And it's going to go up through here and through that back plate that comes along here that the water tank used to go on. And again, I'll show you all this a bit later, but that's kind of what I'm looking to do um, is to put the heater down there. Now what would be great is if I could actually utilize some of these little drains which I only just sealed up actually because they were leaking um, but that would be great if I could utilize some of those rather than to drill even more holes in the wheel wheel. So I'm just going to plop and sort of put this into place and uh, sort of show you roughly what we were looking at doing. Apologies, it's a bit of a gloomy day today so not very bright. So this is roughly where we're going to be um, installing everything. So 
the, the diesel heater itself will go through there. Um, and I think we may even be lucky enough to be able to get the to get one of the exhaust or the uh, all the inlet to go through one of those vent want to go through one of those drain holes, which is quite handy. But either way, that'll be installed somewhat kind of like that, really. I can't I can't get it to stand up exactly, but roughly speaking, in that position. The uh, the vent pipe will basically come out here through um, through the board that runs at the back here. Blimey, everyone's been noisy this morning. We've got the geese this morning as well. They're all leaving. Don't blame them. <clears throat> and um, then we've got to find somewhere to put the fuel tank. So the fuel tank that comes with it, um, it is perfectly adequate, really, for what, what you need. However, as I've done with um, all the electrics in here, I've tried to keep everything so it's reasonably... Uh, what's the kind of right term? Quick release, I suppose. Maybe um, because if we have to strip this out for any reason for any repairs, what I don't want is having um, like the, the the board here hanging off with some wires in the way, and I can't fix anything. So literally, I wanted everything quick release so I can remove the whole board. Um, now the same we really want to do with it with the with the heater. Not quite so easy because obviously it's got an exhaust in the inlet. Um, but from a fuel tank perspective, if for any reason we go to um, a country or we go on the ferry or the Eurostar, something catches me by surprise and they say, oh no, you can't have that separate fuel tank with fuel in it. I need to be able to empty it quickly. Um, so the, the kind of idea is that I want a fuel tank that I can lift out quite quickly and drain. It's diesel, so drain into probably one of the other guys' cars, not mine. Um, and then we'll be able to to, to cross so what I don't want is to install a permanent fuel tank that is difficult to kind of maintain um, so what I'm looking to get is I need to measure up this morning and and see if I can get hold of a uh, marine fuel tank so they're kind of like a um, little words you put in motorboats little, little speed boats um, so it has like a quick release it has a little gauge on it um, and they are lift out tanks and then we can see about making some space in here and installing that. That will be my plan rather than using the one that actually comes with it, which is a bit more basic. But for the time being, what I need to do is work out um, how I'm going to install the actual heater. So I'm going to have to put some holes in the floor. I bought some, some new um, basically like cord, metal core drilling bits um, to kind of work out where I need to put the panel and install the actual heater and I'm gonna work my way backwards from there. So I need to check underneath the car to make sure in fact there's nothing underneath the car there. The exhaust for example. Um, so I can actually get that diesel heater mounted down there. Um, I've got to be careful of things like the compressor here. Compressor here. Um, because obviously I don't want this kicking off tons and tons of heat and causing issues with the compressor. Um, I did consider having the um, compressor this way around here. But I was a bit worried about obviously these cables and all that kind of stuff, so I decided just to, to leave it in somewhere. That's a bit easier to do it. So I'm going to look under the car quickly now and see, make sure there's no um, things in the way so I can find an exhaust out. Okay, so strictly speaking, we're going to be in line with, as we go down, here. Yeah, so this is where, so this heat shield, this heat shield here, is covering the two. Um, drainage holes that we saw earlier so it might be that in fact do I try and remove that I might try and remove that heat shield I don't know yet we'll have a look I might go straight through the heat shield but either way the exhaust runs quite close and this this doesn't catch a lot I'm sorry the, this doesn't catch a lot of movement so we should be okay and then the exhaust would run up to about here basically and just pop out <clears throat> so i think space wise we're okay um i don't think we need to take the exhaust off or anything like that at all um so that should be fine so this is the panel that comes with the heater so it's a bit worse stuff for the moment so <clears throat> in essence what we need to try and do is this panel installed on the floor and then this basically 
screws into that. So out of the way. So this can either go. Sorry, I'll show you how you go. Like that. That way around. Yeah. Can't go that way around. All that way around, I think. So that's the way it's got to go up like that. So I've got to get this installed on the floor like that. Which actually is pretty good. So that sits reasonably flat on the floor, which is great. And in fact, <laughs> I could definitely take that bottom seal off and seal this down through it. Slide this back a bit further, in fact, actually. This is just that bit flatter over here, like that. That's almost completely flat. This is to fit in that space there. And that would be like that, which would be absolutely fine. Because that's the air, that's the air. Hang on, no, other way around. That way around, sorry. Where's the fuel line? Fuel line, that's that needs to be that way around. So that's the air intake this end, and ex um, it, heat exits that end. I don't want it exiting in this direction. So that's gonna work fine. So ideally, I need to make sure that is in the best place as possible. So in fact, I'm not going to use those two, those two um, existing ones. I'm going to use new metal like that. That's, that would be ideal. So I'm going to trim this back because it's not like not sitting flat. And then I'm going to get these in and mark out where these need to go. <coughs> okay, so I have. Let's have a look. We can get this better in there. There we go. So I've marked out where I need to have the plate. So this um, will eventually get attached to the actual bottom of the heater and then plonk down basically into this place with, a bit some, with some sealant and these four so, um, fixing, fixing points. So I've got this kind of, as to where I want it, it's as flat as I possibly can. I just used a chisel to take off the top of that rubber seal as well, so it sits as flat as we can possibly get it. Uh, I might need to bend this end up a little bit, but it won't affect actually how it sits down on the bottom of the boot. Um, so I've now got to drill holes that are big enough for not only that, but also the exhaust, because you, you attach all the pipe work to the bottom of the actual diesel heat and then put it through the hole. So what I've got is a 38 mil um, hole, uh, hole saw. Um, so that is what's gonna go through here and here, and that should be enough. And then hopefully, we should be able to basically do the rest of it around the outside. So I want to make sure this works first uh, and see how, how good these AliExpress carbide saw blades are. They're probably rubbish, but we'll give them a go. So I have also taken off, since I started filming, I've taken the heat shield off underneath, um, which wasn't particularly difficult. So I need a few more clips to put that back up again, but then I can get to everything. So. Like that. So, that's those ones drilled. I should now have enough room to run that down with the exhaust and have enough room for the bolt heads. That one's a little bit more. So we've got the basics done. So the heater now sits quite flush. What we've got now there is the plate fitted. Uh, they use studs and then these nuts, they're tightened up. 
and then I've got uh, the fuel link hose basically on the bottom um, and with with one hose clamp which does now fit through and the I did have the uh, exhaust on it and the inlet on it and actually I found that it's easier just to put them on afterwards you just simply don't need to worry about feeding them through you can do it from underneath I've got lots of access on this car thankfully um, so you'll notice there is an additional hole here and that is for one of these um, seals um, but I did put it back on then I had to trim the top of course it sat proud and it fell back out again so I just need to seal it back on the inside but that's all that is so it is ready to go on what I'm just making sure now is I've covered all the edges with a bit of paint of Hammerite um, so it doesn't basically corrode um, and now I'm just going to mark up where I need to put the screw holes because I am going to screw these on so they come with these little coach um, self-tapping like coach screws uh, so that'd be ideal go through there no, obviously not that direction like that and I'm also going to obviously seal it down to the bottom so I'm just I'm happy taking things in and out in and out all the time um, because I'd rather get it right now um, rather than seal it all up and then realize I need to do something else so uh, this is a, a good place to go so I'm gonna just get this ready to seal I've got some fire sealant, which will go basically all the way around here. Um, probably not across the bottom, but it'll go around this basically. It, it really, in all fairness, is to stop the exhaust gases coming back in here more than anything else. So I just need to make sure that the exhaust one is nicely sealed all the way around that. Um, so it just basically stops the exhaust coming up through. And then I'll, make, I'll run a bead all the way around the outside of this as well. Um, despite there being a hole there just to seal it down to the actual plate itself and then I'll coach screw it down as well and that should be good enough so, that's so this is the stuff I'm sealing up with it's heat resistant silicone and I'll probably use it to pop this back on as well in fairness because there's no a reasonable amount of heat down here so I'm just going to make sure we go all the way around um, on this uh, as well as here if there's too much it squidges out no, no dramas, it doesn't really bother me at all so I'm just going to make sure we go around the areas that really matter. So the areas that matter for me are the exhaust, that, and then the inlet. Like I said, I'm not worried about being too much. I don't particularly want to get too much on the actual diesel into itself, but let's get this up. Particularly easy because you, you kind of do it blind. Sitting flat there. That's sitting pretty flat. Let's check underneath. That's sitting fine. So now I'm going to try and do a couple of coach screws through there. Nice. That worked well. There we go. Right. These are nice and tight. I'm going to check underneath. Underneath. This is what we've got. We've got some coach screws coming through, which is fine. So I'm gonna run some sealant over those. And this is the, uh, this is the inlet coming out. Oops, inlet. And one behind it is the exhaust. 
so we should be able to get both of the wipes on now and stick a clamp on them without any issues. The only issue really I don't particularly like is the fact that the fuel line runs straight on top of the exhaust. That's not a great idea, is it? So I might have to put something underneath that to stop that from, from happening. I'm gonna get a right angled fuel line on that one. I think I'm gonna feed it up over here somewhere because uh, that's not terrific. So the weather's on the turn outside, so I've done what I can outside for the moment, but the exhaust, um, air intake, all that kind of stuff, I'll do afterwards. So I'm gonna wait for the <coughs> all the sealant to, to go off anyway. So what I'm gonna do for the minute is work out where I'm gonna have the outlet. So it's all the, all the, all the exciting bit as to where exactly is the heat gonna come from. Now, essentially, it's gonna come from there and up here. Job done. Uh, if only. So we have a small window opportunity here where I need it to come up. Does this go on the outside of that? Yeah, it does, yeah. So it goes on the outside. I need it to come up. Uh, the last part of my build, this kitchen build, uh, there is a panel here that stops about here. I have to come measure it now. It comes all the way along and this is where the um, front runner water tank goes, 50, 50 litre water tank goes. Now I'm not using it on this trip, so um, but the fridge sort of finishes about here, uh, back of that wall. So ideally I want this to come up about here, because that'll be blooming handy. So I'm just gonna measure off now the back of the kitchen, which I think is probably about maybe 20 centimeters or so. And then we'll work out whether I can get it through here. Might have to move the jack and then basically drill a hole in that panel and that's where it's gonna feed up through. Um, nice and simple, really. I don't worry about well fit at the moment, but we've got the um, all the build back in in the back here, so you'll be able to see actually what we're doing. Hang on. I can get this out with one hand, which I still can't. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I try to do it with one hand. So the heater is installed at the bottom there. Uh, the cabling is a doddle to install. Um, so I've not actually finished that yet. That's going to go under this way anyway, under this, which I can lift up at any point. Um, but the, as you'll see, the actual exit hose is on and comes out here. That's not the strap for it. That's just for my toolbox. But as it happens, that um, is just holding that up for the time being. So that is essentially where the heat is going to come out of around about the area. Whether I cut that back and put a vent on the floor, I don't know yet. Um, but that is absolutely fine. This is where my legs are going to go when I sleep. And I'm just about to take the seats out as well so I can start building the platform that goes here. But uh, it all fits in quite nicely. Um, there's not a lot more I'm gonna change from an electronics perspective, electrics perspective, sorry. I've got a reverse light coming in, which I'm gonna need, which I need to do. So that goes through the headlining anyway. And I need to fix the ditch lights on the dry, on the passenger side, or the near side, left-hand side, you know, if in the States. Um, because they've stopped working as well. The right hand ones stopped working, I fixed those and I know what the problem is, so I anticipate having to do the right, the left ones anyway. So we might have to pull this all out again at some stage because I need to put the fuel tank in. I'm hoping I can put the fuel tank underneath this panel and that goes down underneath the floor anyway. So again, I don't need to get to that, that actual pump anymore. So, so far, so good. You can see that should be quite straightforward. Uh, it is a couple of nuts here. 12 mils or something like that and then I think hang on, I think there's something down here as well maybe underneath that pull out I'm not sure unless it's just those two nuts it might just be those two nuts and they might just sit in I'm not sure we'll find out in a second yeah. basically you twist these off we're triangular jobs so just you know 45 degrees either direction and then inside there is I can get my camera there. One bolt, which I think looks like a 13 mil or something like that. I'll confirm that in a second. So those two would need to come out, and then the two at the back, which I showed you earlier, um, and unplug it, and then seat out. Good guess. 13 mil. Thirteen mil as well. 
Yeah, 13 mil. So it's two 13 mil bolts, two 13 mil nuts. And just in case it falls, I'm gonna unplug the cable now. So you may not have this, this is the heated seats. I'm not sure whether it came all models or not. I have no idea how heavy these are, but they don't look light. So I'm gonna pop these over on the gravel. Okay, so that's nice and easy. So for the sake of never finding these things again, I'm popping the nuts and bolts back on. Because if you're anything like me, I'll put them in a safe place. We know how safe safe places are. Okay, on to the double seat. I should not have lifted that on my own. Word of advice, get someone to help you with the seats. So now the seats are out, oops. I need to build a platform. And now the platform will come up to this point here. You can't quite see on the thing, but there's a divot here, so this will remain and I'm gonna build it up to this point here. So I'm gonna measure it back to, uh, I might do a cut out for that and actually go right into the seat, but that restricts the seat going backwards and forwards in case somebody else drives it. So I might take the sleeping platform up to about here. And, then, and then there was a bed. So everything's back in to a degree. The fridge isn't in at the moment, um, but I've got the seats out, cut a piece of plywood, uh, plywood, plywood, <laughs> going insane um that had lying around um just basically shaped it and used a card bit of cardboard just to create a template and this is all now almost at the same height so i mean it's it's very very close there is this kind of bar in the between which might be amazingly comfortable but um i've ordered some more carpet because i've run out of the gray carpet i'll carpet this and then i'm gonna get hold of a um memory foam mattress i think ikea apparently do one that's kind of the right decent size. I don't think I need that that big. I kind of need a strip that go down there, probably come out a bit wider, maybe to halfway along the middle there, and be able to cover this whole bit where I'm sleeping here. I don't need it to cover the whole thing. Um, that's why I'm going to be stacking boxes anyway and all that kind of stuff. So, um, And underneath I just need to create a couple of legs just at the front and just to hold that weight up. And I got in it. It's absolutely fine. It's reasonably comfortable actually to be fair. Um, steering at a gross saggy headlining isn't great, so I might get that replaced before I go. I need to run a whole no more um, cabling through the headlining anyway for the reverse light, so I might get that done. Uh, whether or not they can do it with this kitchen in is a good question, actually. So that's food for thought. Anyways, on to the next thing. It turned out, which is rather handy. So we've managed to actually carpet this as well. Um, what I've done, I've done a little cut out here. I realise I'm going to be getting in this potentially with snowy boots and all that kind of stuff so I can sit down here take my boots off and then get into bed. I've bought a single memory foam mattress to go there, a uh, two foot six one um, and I'll cut that to shape to go basically into there where I can put my legs. Uh, underneath I put a couple of legs from B&Q, three pound each and I had some hinges spare so I added them onto a um, just a strip of plywood and that can then hinge flat so if I take this out the car I can then shove up against the fence without the legs sticking out. So yeah, so far, this is working out quite nicely. Quite pleased with that. Your dad did it. <laughs> so that's it for this video. I didn't want it to go on too long. Uh, next time we'll be doing the exhaust, uh, the air intake, and hopefully the fuel tank and the fuel line. And I'll be telling you a bit more about the trip to Nordcap as well. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.